Yeah, we got another one, 440 here, 440 there. We've got a lot of engines wall to wall. Let's take a look. Here we're finally in the springtime here in Laval, Quebec. And with the sun out here, yeah, I finally feel some heat, man. This is what I was looking forward to all winter long. And you know, a lot of the cars are gonna be coming out now slowly. I've got a lot of phone calls. I've got a lot of people calling me when they wanna make a date, get the cars in the shop, get them going for the summer. Even though there's no events going on, but the guys still wanna bring their cars out. So, we are working today, it's a working day. I wanted to show you guys what's going on in the shop while we're all working. So let's take a look. You know when spring is here, when you got Johnny with his AAR Cuda out, the bad Cuda, He's here to adjust the rockers for the summer. Let's take a look and see what they're doing. John's got here a full 46 Barracuda. This is what he cruises with. This is one ultimate machine, let me tell you. This was an engine we built many, many, many years ago. John, when did we- 2011. 2011. Yeah. Is it still going strong? Very strong, very good, strong. Good stuff. So Vasily, you're gonna adjust the valves for John? I'll do my best. Do your best, buddy. Good stuff. You know, we built this many years ago. Johnny wanted to build these. He used to have a different motor in here. He wanted to go with a 440, aluminum heads, six pack. So we built an engine from nothing, put it together. We had it on the dyno running. It was made just a little bit over 500 horsepower. That's what he wanted. And this is what he's got. And it's not a real double AR Cuda. It's a tribute, but this is what he wanted. That's the look he likes. He wanted a double AR hood, double AR stripes, vinyl top, and of course the rear deck spoiler. But after all, when you cruise with this car, it's one mean machine going down the street. No, this guy, John, doesn't baby the car. Let me tell you, this guy kicks it, beats it, you know, and uh, <laughs> he drives it hard like I do with my Challenger. But John, I gotta give you credit, buddy. You got one nice car here. It's Nick's Garage who built it in the auto, so uh, I'm, I'm a proud owner. Good man. I love your car, by the way. Stands out. When you see John now come out with this car, you know spring is right here. So now that the snow is all gone, we got some sunshine, which I've been waiting for a long time. So now things are starting to happen. And there we have it. It's 1970 Cuda, Johnny's car. That's it, man, look at that. This is one awesome stripe. I've always loved this stripe with the American flag, all American racers. You're torquing down the wheels, Leo? Just torquing down some wheels here, Johnny. And we've got a new member on the staff, Leo. He's now uh, back in the, I should say, now working with us full time. Yep. He's a passionate guy with American muscle cars. Sure, sure. That's why, that's why I took you aboard, buddy. For sure. Devin's back with us also. Where's Devin? Devin? Good man, welcome aboard, buddy. You know, we got, we've got more cars here, this year than ever. So now I've got a full team. I got you, Vasily, and Leo. I got the whole young group here with me now, working full time all week at the shop. After all, there's one car after another. Here's another one, 1980 Firebird Formula. He came in with a big list, alternator problems, carburetor problems, exhaust problems. Vasily's been working on it for a few days. So this was probably ready for tonight to be delivered. They are nice wheels, I kind of like them. He's also installed some brand new tires on it, my uh, client. He's put a new exhaust system on it. But it, after all, it is a very clean car. We had it up on the lift. Solid car, let me tell you, solid car. I've got Manny coming this weekend. Finally, we got some plans to put together for the Jensen. I have spoke to Tristan this week that he's come by. We're gonna work on the cooling system, carburetors, a few other items. But the most thing I'm concerned about is the exhaust system. I need to find an oval system I want to fix up because I want to give them a lot of ground clearance. And this is not going to be a simple job. It's not a common thing, but uh, we're going to do the best we can on that. I've got his fans right here, which work, uh, they're slightly bigger than the ones I got on the car. Man, he's got it all planned out to work with less relays. And this is the system that works progressively. In other words, 
They don't shock the alternator, like they don't just kick in one shot and take all the amperage at the same time and just about to drop the RPM on the motor. So this is gonna work perfect. Besides that, it's the exhaust system I'm worried about. But anyways, we're gonna get to it. That's the next thing we wanna do. 1970 Charger 500. This one belongs to George from Texas. He just picked it up from, uh, I believe someone named Wayne in Manitoba. He's got a big list on this one. I do not know what he wants to fix. I'm waiting for George to uh, reply back to me. I've told him that the car is in our shop. Charger 1970, triple green with a 3D3 automatic with AC. I'm gonna wait for George to uh, call me back on it and we'll take it from there. The first thing I gotta do on this car, if you look good, this is a beautiful car when it's a triple green. Green interior, green car, green vinyl roof, which is very common in those days in 1970 with Chrysler. This is one thing we gotta fix this weekend. I've got them on your cylinder, so we gotta replace this. George, if you're watching, I'm working on this uh, this weekend. I wanna change your cylinder because in the transportation, they had a hard time running your car because it, they wouldn't start. But anyways, we'll take care of that. You know, back in those days, you could have bought a triple color car, black vinyl roof, black car, black interior, but then you could have bought a B5 blue, B5 blue charger, blue interior, but I don't need a blue top, they had a black top, sorry, or a white top, as a matter of fact. But it is one beautiful car. And they're working on that uh, Cuda, I'm just curious. Let's see how they're going along with that Cuda. Let's go see. Oh, you got the air cleaner off. Yeah, give it more room. You know, it is unreal how many six pack, six barrels have come into my shop for the past month. One after the other. Hey Vasily, nothing new to you? Nope, hey? six pack guy. No, you worked on Robert six pack yesterday. Yes, yes. We've got a few six packs here. I've got Marks. I got the one I just delivered to, uh, what's his name, Alain. Alain. That's the one who did the testing with the uh, Max Wedge exhaust manifolds versus headers versus high performance manifolds. Here's another six barrel. Well, because it's a Plymouth, we call it a six barrel. Six barrel. Yeah, we got another one, 440 here, 440 there. We've got a lot of engines wall to wall. Let's take a look. Okay, here. I've got a few engines we've got to start working on. That one is ready for delivery. This one belongs to Joe. One of his clients' project car. It's another 440 six pack, which belongs to a 70 Challenger. This one's ready for delivery. That's going to be going soon. This one here belongs to Tim. I've got another uh, six barrel. Uh, Leo's painting the oil pump that we had replaced. So paint the pump, and after that, when we get a chance, we're going to drop it in the car Perfect. while we take apart the transmission that belongs to this engine to that car. That sounds good. Which is an 18 spline heavy duty gearbox which is an 833 model, four speed, all cast iron. Okay, so this is ready. That one is ready. The Hemi, it's gone to Frank in Boston, that's gone. And then I've got Tyler's, this is the next engine we're gonna start working on very soon, belongs to a 66 GTO, 389. This is the next one that's gonna go on the stand. And I'm also working on another 440, which is just a refresh right here. This one belongs to Paul, another 440. I believe it belongs to a 71 satellite. This is gonna be nice and quick and easy. You know, we're just gonna change bearings, rings, hone the cylinder, nothing major on this. Do a nice valve job, put on new gaskets, new bearings, check out the pump, and that's it. I've also got Mark. He pulled out his 446 pack. We ran the engine on the dyno. He's made exactly 390 horsepower, just like it did from the factory, but he wants to add a little bit more power. So we're gonna put in a little voodoo cam and headers. So when we, when we receive the parts, we're gonna get it done. When that's assembled, headers and cam, we're gonna go back in the dyno and make another test, put it back on video so you guys can see the difference when it made 390 when it came out of the car. And one thing I've concerned about uh, the last few months, I've been slowed down with a lot of parts waiting time to come here. For example, I've got a set of cylinder heads I'm waiting for, the 440 for Eugene's 440 that belongs to the Charger 500 which is gonna be here soon after it's painted, because Roger's been working on it uh, quite a while now, with the new staff also working on it. So I've got a set of heads I'm waiting for, for Eugene. I've been trying to find a set, he's been trying to find a set. 
We haven't located it yet. I've been checking with other sources that I'm getting comments from viewers, and so far we're not lucky. I also had a set of six, uh, eight pieces for 29 right over here. Let's take a look. This one took six weeks to receive a simple flat top business for 289, 60 over. We're looking for just under 300 horsepower on this one for Brian's 66 Mustang. And this one belongs to Dan from Gunnanakway, Ontario. This is the one we just did a cleanup job and we wanted to know why there were shavings. And I noticed that most of the shavings were in the oil pump and the gear on the uh, distributor drive. So we've cleaned it out, we've taken it apart. We just did a quick cleanup and uh, I'm gonna put on a new drive gear, a new pump, and we're gonna change the uh, system from uh, external dry sump to internal. So this is gonna be a nice simple job, because now he just wants to drive the car. He used to have nitrous on it, it used to be a race car, but now he just wants to cruise with it on the street. So all we did was that we need to tear it apart. I didn't look at that, I just looked at a few bearings. They all looked good. I measured the clearance on, they look good. We put back the cylinder heads. We got a new intake gasket. Not much more than that. And is it gonna go on the dyno? I do not know. I'm gonna call my client during the week and I will ask and we'll find out. And this just came in this morning. Check it out. I have no idea. I've never, never done one of this. And you know what this is, you guys? Can you guys tell me? This is a six cylinder. No, it's not GM, it's not Ford, it's not Chrysler. Look at this. Something out of my ballpark fit. Jaguar, 1965. My brothers own an auto parts and they deal with a lot of clients and they know that we do some engine building and they've asked me just to install the pistons in the shore block, the cranking pistons. So I'm gonna, it's here for me to do some measurements. Check out these domes, eh? Like a hemi piston. Look at that. It's a, hemisp it's a hemispherical cylinder head, I'm sure. There are new pistons, it's got new rings, but I have done no measurements. So they brought it here this morning They've asked me, Nick, just check the crank, the rods, and the pistons before you assemble, just the show block. So then the client can take it from there and do the rest of the job himself. Wow, one after the other. Leo, you know what you're gonna do? Yes. You're gonna take the top rings, couple, yep. and I want you to check the gaps check on the, the gaps. top rings, measure yep. the uh, bore. Yep, because this is board. new to us. I, yep. I don't know what the bore size is. You're going to measure the bore. Yep, perfect. Check the gap. Let yep. me know uh, what we have. What First we ring, second ring, yep, and no the oil ring. So everything's marked in the bag. Whatever you take okay. apart, whatever you take apart, put it back in the same way, okay? Yep, so no you problem. can see. Can yes. Go right ahead. Take okay. the filler gauge, take a, yep. the vernier, measure it just like that. Number one. So uh, well, if I stay tonight, we'll see uh, we can put the short board together. And then we're going to measure the crankshaft, the bearings, and all that. We're gonna do this more simple. When we put the crank in place, we are gonna use some plastic gauge. You ever use plastic gauge? I have, yes. You know, it's old school, it's worked for me, and uh, we're gonna do that. Okay, that works. All right. And then I think, and another thing, Leo, Leo, you're gonna take a fluid gauge, just measure the pitch of the wall clearance. You know, you know how to do that? Uh, yes, I believe so, yeah. I'm teaching Leo here, he's new on board with us here. He's, uh, I'm trying to teach him old school stuff. He used to do a lot of what, diesel mechanics? I used to do uh, diesel trucks, uh, especially, uh, they were called the uh, uh, de-icing vehicle, that's it, at the airport. And then uh, a couple of weeks ago, Nick offered me a job and I, you know what, I said, hey, why not? So here I am and uh, you know what, I really don't regret it. If anything, it's for the better. So what's a young guy like you who has a passion for muscle cars and working on diesel trucks? You should be here, buddy. That's and it. here he is, welcome aboard, Leo. So write down, take a piece of paper, give me all the figures. Yep. If you need help, give me a call. No and that's what we're here for. So we're gonna check out anything before we do any assembly. Yep, sure. And what else do we got here? Now I've got a few engines at the machine shop. I got a block that I'm waiting for pistons for uh, the GTX 71 from John in uh, Staten Island. I'm still waiting for pistons. I've got the pistons that are, I believe, coming in tomorrow for the 383 that belongs to Luke in Victoria. So Luke, if you're watching, uh, hopefully the block is here, board, and the pistons here next week so I can get going for the short block assembly. What else do I got? I've got the Pontiac that belongs to Giuliano. I only sent out the block on this one just for the, what do you call it? To bore it out and balance only, then brought here, then the assembly starts, check all the measurements, make sure everything's correct, and so forth. And I've got a Challenger coming in next week, 1970, that belongs to Sebastien, for this 440, which is also ready for delivery to be installed in the car next week, which Vasily is gonna take care of it, so we can get another engine delivered. 
And then I've got another two here. This one belongs to Neil, that's gonna go in the green dart. And this one belongs to James from Timmins, Ontario. Which I gotta bring the car back in from storage so we can get that installed also. That's another engine that's ready. And I've done another one just to paint up and clean up on the Pontiac 400, which is on the other side. A lot of people love the uh, look of this motor. This is the one that was a burgundy painted engine with the chrome valve cover. So this just uh, just was just a cleanup, paint job, replace the valve covers, and installed in the firebird after the engine bay is painted. So when that gets back here, that's the only thing we're doing with that. And I've got I've got a lot of pieces waiting. I've also got pieces waiting for my brother's engine, which I'm building him. A, we're working together on a stalker. I got pieces waiting on the uh, GTX. I've also got headers waiting for Mark Challenger, which he ordered from TTI, which I haven't received yet. There was something else he's waiting for in the Pontiac. Nope, I got all the parts for the Pontiac. Finally got that. Then I'm looking for a set of off covers I ordered for the Dan from Gun and Arcway. I'm waiting for a set of off covers on that. And this one here, I'm waiting for a few bracketry and the fuel system to do for the uh, Fox Body Mustang that belongs to George. So practically, I've got a lot of pieces I'm waiting for. There was something else, there was a Chevy. We're trimming down, okay, the big block Chevy right here. This one here, I've got a lot of little items because I've got to set the cylinder heads are bare, except for the valves, they're there. I've got to do this one here. I got the core plug kit, that took a while. I don't know why, it's a big block Chevy, it's a very common engine. And uh, I've got the pistons to set up because they had a way too much compression, it was way over 12.5 ratio. So we're cutting down the dome so I can get this engine in the mid 11s with the aluminum heads. How's it going, Leo? Good, good. So far we have, what, uh, 2,000? Uh, 3,000? 2,000. That's, that sounds right with a cast piston. That sounds right. Okay. okay. Then if you want, turn the block over. Yep. Turn the block over, put all the main bearings in. Yep. And make sure all the main bearings, make sure they're not numbered one to whatever how many main bearings are. There's uh, seven, I believe. Seven, and uh, make, look at them, make sure they're, I'm gonna show how to look, go through them because you, you wanna make sure they're all standard or 10 under. Okay. We're gonna measure the crank, we wanna make sure. Or put it in. Yep. Put a plastic gauge and we're going to see after. Okay, I can do that. Okay. Good. And uh, one thing I'm going to have a hard time waiting on parts, I'm sure, which I'm still waiting for a few bearings that I've ordered, the main bearings that go through the transmission on an 833, which is right here. I ordered the main bearings that is one in the rear, one in the front. I've ordered a few of them. They came in, but I looked at them and they're the wrong models. After waiting such a long time, I got the wrong bearings. I don't know why. They're the numbers corresponding to my catalog. So I've ordered another set, different numbers. Hopefully they're in next week so I can start putting this thing together after it's taken apart today. So we're gonna start dismantling this right now and take a good look how it looks like inside. You guys ready to see it? You know, we uh, just finished building the engine for Tim on his uh, 69 Roadrunner A12 car, which is right behind me here. And uh, he's also asked me to tear down the transmission, look at the bearings, look at everything else at the same time. So we've taken it off and now we're ready to take it apart. So uh, let's start by removing the side cover. Because just by removing the side cover, it's like uh, also an inspection cover. You can see, you can see everything inside to see if everything looks good or so whatever. But the bearings, it sounds like a little humming noise, but you know what? We're gonna tear it all down, we're gonna see it. And of course, the two main bearings, whenever I overhaul a transmission, I replace them all the time. This is a four-speed. It's made by New Process. It's the model 833, which is a common four-speed transmission that Chrysler has done with all their muscle cars. And they had two versions of it. They had a 23 spline for the muscle cars and also the 18 spline. So if you had a 440, 446 pack, six barrel, or a 426 Hemi, they all came with an 18 supply, just like in this uh, particular model right here. This one has an 18 supply because it is a 446 barrel. And every time when you have an 18 supply and it's a four speed car, it always comes with a Dana 60. So this is extremely heavy duty, you guys. It weighs in about just over 100 pounds. It's made out of cast iron. It's a very durable, strong transmission, which is also the same kind I have in my Challenger, uh, Kowalski Challenger. And it's a very brutal piece of uh, transmission. And you know when you back up, like you've seen in the movie Kawasaki, when he backs up and he makes that whining sound? I love that sound. And this is what these guys uh, sound like when you uh, back up with their cars. And you know, a lot of people there, Sarah, and they, a lot of people are asking me, you know, do they make a reproduction of this transmission? Not really, but they make a reproduction of the front shaft 
For example, if you had a 23 spline transmission, you want to convert it to an 18 spline. All you had to do was uh, replace the front shaft to an 18 spline from a 23. But anyways, this is the real thing, you guys. This is the real McCoy. It's an 18 spline, four speed that comes out of that road under the Bronx to Tim right here. And you know, they, uh, they, these are extremely heavy duty, but I've also had the 23 spline and four speed cars like the 440s and the Hemis, and they were pretty strong too. They, they held up pretty good on the uh, four speed cars when they, oh, they had the 23 spline on uh, heavy chargers. Like for example, if we take Jean Guy with the 66 charger. He's got a 440 six pack in there, and he's broken differentials, he's broken dry shots. But he's got a 23 spline gearbox, and he's never broke it. So, just to tell you, imagine an 18 spline is much stronger than a 23 spline. So, you know, you're just starting with a great piece. And are they rare? Yes, a lot of people that look for them, they don't come by any day, but let me tell you, they're hard to find. I've been looking for one for a while. I only have one that I'm waiting for someone to bring it in for me uh, or meet him at Carlisle so I can pick it up. I've had a lot of 23 splines come around, but an 18 spline is a unique, rare model transmission come by. If you guys have any 18 spline transmissions, four speed lying around, B body, re body, give me a call. Maybe I'll be interested in buying it, okay? A lot of guys have converted their cars from an automatic to a four-speed, and they're mostly big blocks. They all look for an 18 spline, which is rare. Maybe that's why you can't find them, which is rare. And you know, a lot of the uh, Mopars, muscle cars, mostly were made automatics, uh, their cars. And a four-speed car, they were around, but not as many as the automatics. There were a lot more automatic cars than four-speeds when it came to Mopar muscle cars. <laughs> this thing weighs more than the engine in a four-cylinder on the Civic, let me tell you. It is a brutal transmission. It's a super heavy duty. There are other four speeds on the market that are very strong too, like the top loader or the uh, Borg Warners, Muncie's, they're all good transmission. But one of these, this here is one of my favorites, the 18 spline gearbox, which we also call it a Hemi gearbox. It's a very, very solid piece. I've never seen one break down yet, never. I've only just done maybe minor work on them like gaskets or seals or maybe just the roller bearings and that's it. But to see one broke like this, Never. This one here, I'm just gonna take it apart because it seems like it has a little humming sound. You know what, once I take it apart and clean the bearings, the two main bearings, clean them good. If they're pitted inside a little bit or for any reason, then we know we have to replace the bearings. But in this case, once I take it all apart, I replace the bearings automatically. Sometimes the synchronizers would be damaged or some of that because sometimes people not adjust the shifter correctly or power shifted or something was not lined up or the shifter was not adjusted correctly. But besides that, they're, uh, they're very good. They're very solid transmissions. So we're gonna start by removing the side cover right here, which also holds the uh, linkages for the uh, four speed uh, forks. Here we go. It's gonna take a while. I'm not using, I am not using any power tools. And you know, the gear oil they use in this is just like the differential. And if you get this on you, boy, does it smell, let me tell you. Well, you know, it doesn't take much. You use a five-inch key here, a hammer, a piece of wood to help me press out some of the bearings. You need a half inch for the uh, front uh, cover on the uh, pilot uh, front shaft. And of course, half inch also for the cover. Then I'm gonna use a five-inch key to remove the uh, housing. And that's about it. Then you need a special pair of pliers for the uh, snap rings that uh, hold it in place on the inside. You know, I've got I've got Vasily working on a Cuda. He's got work. He's working on the uh, 70 Corvette, doing a master cylinder on it. Trying to work with the Cuda. I got Leo and uh, Devin making measurements for me on the Jaguar motor which uh, I have to go double check that page. We want to make sure there's no uh, mistakes going on. Like I said, set everything, give me some numbers what you guys find. And then when I'm going to go back in there, I'm going to check everything again. Because you know, there's no mistakes. Because once you build an engine and you put it in a car and it goes wrong, that's a no-no. Okay. You know, these things are rare, you guys. 
You want to make sure they don't break or get damaged or installed or built the wrong way. You just got to make sure that it's done right the first time. That plug here is a two pin. That's your backup light switch. So every time, this is a neutral right now, see? When this shaft doesn't turn and this one turns in the front, you know the gearbox is neutral. Then when you do this, you can hear the fork hit the switch, activate your backup lights. And when you put it back in neutral, it's off the switch, lights are off. And this here is the uh, mounting plate for the shifter. But the shifter sitting underneath the car, it doesn't matter. This is the mounting plate, which I don't need to uh, remove from the housing. It's gonna come off as one piece. Well, you know what? For the mileage these cars make nowadays, you don't need to rebuild it. You could go easy, easy, 20, 30 years without rebuilding. But the weakest link is right here. I'm gonna show you guys. When the O-rings dry up, when the car is still in storage for many years, like this one here, for example, right here. There's an O-ring right here in the casing. To change that O-ring, you gotta tear down every piece in the transmission just to change that O-ring. And this is the lowest point of the transmission and the oil was filled halfway in the gearbox. So if that seal is gone, they will always have an oil leak in the bottom of the transmission. And there's no way to fix it unless you take it all apart, take out this reverse uh, uh, rod for the uh, fork and then change that O-ring which is on the shaft. Imagine that, you gotta go through a whole transmission just to change an O-ring that only costs a few pennies. There we go. There's your reverse. I love that sound. Look at that. You know, it sounds solid, eh? Look at that. I love that sound. And you know, at the same time, when you take off the cover, you look at all the teeth, if they're all on the gears. If you see a couple missing or worn out or scratched, then you know it needs to be replaced. Looks pretty good. Here is what we're talking about the contact right here, see? There it is. There's the switch. There's your backup switch. So when you put it in reverse, look what happens. There you go. Pushes out the pin, makes contact on the two contacts on the outside and brings the power to the backup lights. What I'm doing is I'm looking at make sure that every tooth is on every gear. You know, if you see them worn out or scratched or uh, miss, uh, what do you call it? Uh, when there's a tooth missing or worn out, you know you're gonna have to replace it. What I'm looking at down here, looks like it's pretty good. Looks like it's all there. The synchros, they're there. I've, uh, <clears throat> that goes. No, it looks good, it looks good so far. You know, there's a lot of pieces in here. You know, we got out of the car now, we're gonna open it up, we're gonna put all new seals to be on the safe side, but before you do that, you wanna make sure you got all the gaskets, the kit, which I have a few in stock, which I'm gonna bring down in a few minutes. Because, you know, the uh, front shaft seal is a lot larger on an 18 spline versus the one on the 23 spline. I've got lots of them for the uh, 23 spline. And then when you buy a gasket kit complete, it comes with the seal of a 23 spline that you bought a kit for an 18 spline. So sometimes, you know, you're gonna have to buy two kits to make one. But you know what? I've gone through it so many times, I'll figure it out. It's the bearings I'm concerned the most, the bearings right here. One main bearing there, one main bearing here. Check out how many gears are in there, right? Imagine the guy who engineered this. 
What a, what a brain, let me tell you. Just like the guy who invented the automatic transmission and whoever invented this back in the day, very intelligent, let me tell you. Very intelligent. In my field, being a mechanic, or should I say, working with engines, transmissions, you know, you, you look at these things, like we uh, did not design this thing, we're just replacing bearings, gaskets, seals. But you know, when you're taking it apart, you also think of the people back then, in the years, 100 years or whatever, they designed these things. And you can imagine, this is engineering. This is a, a guy that was sitting there and thinking, how is this gonna work? How is it gonna go from one gear to another? How the gear is gonna work, not wear out? Do they have a certain pattern? What's the gap? Do they have a special type of material? There's a lot of things uh, involved to do something like this. You know, after years and years and years, it gets better. But I'm looking at it here, you know, it looks like old technology, but you know, if you think about it, it's high tech those days when they did this, let me tell you. Like when they made the Model T Ford, that's an old car. You know, they looked at it, you know, they had horse and buggies going down the street. Then the next thing you see this guy driving by with an old Model T Ford, runs on fuel, and it was going on without any horses. And you look at it, you go, what the hell is making that thing working? Anyways, that's then. And today we look at it, and look at it today, you know, it looks old, it's old school, I love it but it's still involved in engineering those days when they did this thing, let me tell you. Then the automatic transmission came out, another genius brain, the way they designed it. Just the oil, hydraulics, you're just driving down the street and it's changing gears without you shifting manually. That is a, you know, a lot of intelligence that uh, people in the automotive industry has gone through. And there's a lot more than just transmissions and motors and whatever. Everything else, you know, like wiper motors, uh, heaters, air conditioning, everything compact into one little sardine can and making it run, getting the comforts of a, a couch sitting in the car. You get hot, you put AC on, you get cold, you put on a heater, starts to rain, you got wipers. Uh, you know, it takes you from coast to coast. I mean, what a beautiful thing to sit in and take a long ride and enjoy it, let me tell you. You know, they're okay, maybe they upgraded things, they use better materials today, better design, longer lasting. But then again, it all started from the revolutionary when the Model A Ford or the Model T Ford came out back in the uh, 1900s, early 1900s. And then over the years, we you know one guy after another, engineer, let's try this, let's try that. Then things came out like longevity, something like self-lubricating, self-drive, for example, like uh, the automatic transmission. Then we're trying to make a lot of things for uh, people to make it very simple and maybe and very comfortable to drive a car. I was watching uh, lately in the past few weeks on a lot of black and white videos on how the Buick was built, how was the Dodge was built. We're talking about in the 1920s, 1930s, they take a big piece of sheet metal that comes to the factory, it's a big, big roll, comes in, they cut it in so many feet, then it goes on a big stamp. Even just to make the stamp, the angle, whoever engineered the angles to cut it, stamp it, and then make it fit when the car came down the line, and then assemble it. You know, that, that's a lot of, and that's only one part, for example, like the hood. Then you got the door, then you got the inner part of the door. You know, there's a lot of things involved. I never realized it. And still today, we're still using a lot of that technology today, what they used back then in the early 1900s. I'm gonna take off the real tail housing. This is gonna take a little while but I'll manage. I'm gonna say, why don't you use power tools? Ah, it's okay, I'm not in a rush. I like uh, using some sheer strength on this. And it weighs in about a less, at least uh, around 120, 125 pounds. All made out of cast iron. Okay. 
There we go. Put this on the side. Put this here. Take out this screw. Here we go. I don't know if you guys know what gear oil smells like. It's awful. You, you get it on your clothes. You bring it home. Believe me, your wife or your husband or whatever is going to know that, let me tell you. It's got a very, very deep smell. You know, it's gear oil, 80-90. And uh, it's awful. Okay, I'm just going to get a hammer and tap it off. Okay, here we go. Oh, that smell, Jesus. Now we just uh, separate it, the rear tail shaft. It's called, uh, it's also holding the main shaft. And, uh, we're not going to tear it all down 100% until I, unless I need to replace the synchronizer or a gear. But in the meantime, what I want to look at is, these are the synchros, see? This is what switches from one gear to another when it slides in. These here, they're made out of brass, and you want to make sure that these are not worn out. Because these are worn out, it will be very hard to shift into one gear to another. But they look pretty good, so this one looks pretty good. This goes right here. Anyways. You know, there's no way to tell if uh, how long ago this transmission was built. I don't know, but uh, that doesn't matter. There's got no dates on it or anything like that. But if you could tell by the gaskets, they're like they feel like they're dry. And uh, I'm gonna take apart and look at the seals. You know, and just by touching the seals, you know if they're soft. They're not not too long ago. But if they're hard as a uh, solid, then you know they're uh, finished. We've got O-rings in the shifter uh, shifter cover. We've got an O-ring right over here, which I'm gonna remove later on. But in the meantime now, let's take off the front shaft. You know, after building one of these, the most important thing is there's no oil leaks, shifts good, and uh, that's all you need from it. Besides that, then you got a good working transmission. You got a front seal and a front gasket over here, like so. There you go, see? This is the front seal. Here's your front gasket. Let's take a look inside what's going on uh, with that Jaguar six cylinder, which I'm not very familiar with. I've got the new guys on board, and we really have to check into this very good. All right, what do you got here? Use what do you bearings. want to show me? They're used bearings. Okay. They're used bearings? Yeah, look at the look on them. They're used bearings. you got to be kidding me. Look at this. Look, what did you get? The, ba the package was open when we opened the box. Hmm. We thought maybe they opened the package just to see if they fit, but they're, they're, they're... This has been open for a yeah. while, too. They've been open for a while. No, this is not good. This is not good. Should be three white bearings, eh? Mm-hmm. One, two, three. I had to say, uh, <laughs> they are new bearings. They're just discolored. They're new bearings. But this, you can yeah, feel, you I, can I, feel I, that. No, no, this is from storage or something. These are new bearings. 
and the tenth down undersize. Okay, now let me see. Where's the third oh, the white one. bearing? We gotta be sure. This is new to me. This is new to you guys. So we cannot make a mistake. They are new bearings, but they look stale, or should I say, stained from storage. Mm. Here. Can I see that one? Hey, after all, you know, you guys, this is a 65 Jaguar. It's not very common. It's not popular here. Let's no, it's that. not popular. <laughs> Matter of fact, this is my first Jaguar 6-cylinder engine that's coming to my shop. I remember doing a valve job on a Jaguar 6-cylinder many years ago at the old shop. Just a valve job. It took me days to do it. So now we just got installed six pistons in a block with the rods, the rings, the crank, main bearings. And the so you can take it home and let the customer assemble it. That's what he wants to do. He wants me to go through this to assemble the crank and pistons, that's all. That should be a quick. Just a, it's gonna take more time to figure this out than to assemble it. The you know specs, that, you guys? Yeah, to find the specifications, blueprinting. Okay, first of all, we gotta check these two have the same number. Here we go. Yeah, I don't know, it's because you see the stain here, like, like so. See the stain? But they are brand new bearings. We're gonna have to clean them, they're stained, but we're gonna clean them and you guys, okay? We're gonna have to put some plus gauge, look at it. Here we go. This is, uh, okay, I gotta look at these numbers really good. I don't wanna make a mistake. These are county bearings. Are they all the same width? Yes. You have to look at everything, because it doesn't tell you which, which main cap it goes on, you see? There's another, see this one, 788. Yep. 788, one. 788, one. Yeah, they're all the same number. I have the same thing here. So just clean the back, clean the back. Yep. And put them all three in place. Mm -hmm. I think, they, yeah, they go, look, they are all exactly the same way. Give me that. Mm -hmm. They're the same design. They all have two oil holes, eh? No, doesn't matter. This is good. Put all three in, you guys. Okay. And then check the other four. Clean the bags with thinner? Uh, yeah, just clean it now with dinner. Uh, uh, you know what? Pass the clean right. It'll be just good. Just pass the clean right. Pass the clean right. Give me the other one, uh, the other main bearings. Hello. These are main bearings also? Yep. Are these the upper halves? Those uh, are the upper halves of the ones you just had. Here's the other main. They're all the same number. 788.1. Uh, this one's the same. So upper, upper bearing, lower bearing on the mains are the same. It doesn't matter. No, I don't think so. Okay, K, U, K, U, they're all the same number. So they have a, it's a 360 groove bearing. Okay, they're all the same to me. You know what's the most important thing? When you guys put these caps in, you gotta make sure the oils line up. Yep. Okay, let me show, show me the thinner ones now. You know, sometimes you can see a production date code on the bearings. Mm -hmm. Do you see it anywhere, just to see? But it's the, it's that, uh, it's a film of oil that's dried up in the bearings protected from uh, corrosive or corrosion or anything like that. That's what it is. We're gonna clean them. You know, don't use uh, use WD-40 to clean the back, okay? Yeah. Don't use thinner, not okay. thinner. So the boys know what they're doing there with the uh, Jaguar crankshaft. So right now I'm gonna remove the front shaft. And this we need these special pliers to open up the snap ring like so. You know, they have a snapper here so that the bearing doesn't come out of place. It stays firmly in there. Okay. I'm gonna have to drop this. Okay. Now we're gonna take the... Uh... Now we're gonna start removing all the uh, roller bearings behind the uh, front shaft. Okay, let me get a little pan and put them in. And uh, they do my job, they know they're made for cooking. But I use them here for uh, putting uh, little pieces on, especially when they're oily. They don't drain on the table or anywhere. Here we go, now I'm just gonna take out the, uh, this is the, the part I don't like, but I got no choice. Uh, you know what, I will get the uh, magnet, I'm gonna pull them out. I don't like this part of the job because this is where you put your fingers in this oil that smells. And this is the bearings, I got a uh, roller bearings that I got to remove. And like I said earlier, and you got to check all these rollers individually that they're not pitted. You know, 
It's very rare to find something pitted in a gearbox, especially when things stay in oil all their life. But then again, if it was drained and stayed outside for many years, it's a good possibility that you might find those rollers pitted. There we go. We got all the rollers out. You can see these rollers go right here. So when you go inside this shaft, these rollers work with this shaft together. So you put it in together and uh, you got a roller bearing. Okay, and now we got to take this one out. This is going to take some time. Here we go. But my main concern is I want to show you guys when it comes to that lower O-ring, what you have to go through. Wait till you see this. Okay, we'll leave that there. All right. Now to remove the front shaft, we're gonna have to lower the, remove the lower shaft. All right. Well, I need to take off the shaft. It's practically a press fit into the casing. And uh, you can only lock it out towards the back, but it's got a lock ring here. Or should I say a lock, uh, a little piece of uh, metal to lock the shaft from going forward. And uh, I have to bang it out towards the back to take out the uh, lower shaft, like so. Maybe get a bigger hammer. Then it didn't move. Okay, get a bigger hammer. Yeah, this one's bigger. You know what the problem is? I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna turn it so I can hit it my way. Here we go. When did I do my first transmission? <laughs> I remember doing one when I used to have an AA Arcuda back in 1977. I bought it, it was an automatic car. And I, um, I uh, wanted to have a four speed, so what I did is I converted that car into a four speed back then. I remember going to uh, someone in the South Shore of Montreal and I found a 70 Cuda. It was uh, for scrap, rotten out, but they got a four speed in it, no motor, nothing else in it, just a four speed with the pedals. Everything was thrown in the trunk, so I bought the whole car just to get all the pedals, the shifter linkage, the transmission, and uh, everything was there except everything was rough. So when I'm looking at it, I've never taken apart a four-speed transmission before in my life. And I said, you know what? One day we're gonna have to learn. So slowly but surely, I had a shop manual from Chrysler. I took it all apart. I built it with a new seal kit, put it all together, changed the pedals underneath the dash, changed the floor pan. The next thing you know, is I had a four-speed Cuda. And I had that car, uh, I owned that car for like five, six, seven years until I sold it to a friend of mine's, which today is owned by Leslie, which is the green car, which I had it painted red that time. And now he's converted back to automatic. From an automatic to a four speed, four speed back to an automatic on the same car. Anyways, what can you do? And that car, 50 years later, it's in the same gang with us here in my own uh, uh, gang that I have here in my shop. There we go. The lock came out. There's the lock. Let's show you guys where it came from. Right in there. Oh, sh yeah, it broke. No, oh, what the happened there? Oh, come on. We got a problem here. I'm gonna show you something. Oh, this is crazy now. This is crazy. That shouldn't have broke. Look at this, I'll show you why. That's the keyway. That's the keyway, see? Oh, this is crazy. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Look, see, that's the keyway. And this is part of the shaft. How the hell did it break? It doesn't make sense, I've done so many of them. Right here. Oh, come on. Wow. Yeah, you know, 
I've taken a lot apart, but uh, not to break like this. I mean, this is the way I've been doing it all my life. I never had this issue. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Anyways, we're gonna replace it, that's all. I got another one. Okay, here we go. Let's take it out. Like so. There's the front shaft. And then Washers. You ever seen a gearbox, uh, Leo? There it is. And everyone's gonna have a lot of rollers. You're gonna see them now. Yeah. It's a lot of pieces. There's one. There's another one. This is front. This is back. There's a lot of rollers. Quite a few. Look at that. Look at this now. know. Here. Just put this. Uh, hold on. Put this bolt back here. It's okay. They're all here. See, all the rollers go in here. But this, you can assemble it with grease. Mm. There you go. Look at this. All these are filled with rollers. But what concerns me is this shaft. I pushed it out. And look what happened. It chipped. My dad's chipped too. It chipped too? Mm. On yours? Yep. That's guy. That shouldn't have broke. I know. I've done it so many times. I never broke on me. This is the first time I had the shaft break on me. Anyways, you know what? Doesn't matter, I have gonna find it. I have another one in the back, I gotta look for it. There it is. Ah, uh, we'll fix it. Yeah, I've seen the same thing when uh, I rebuilt my uh, transmission. Your uh, dad has the same car? Same car, yeah. Except wow. my dad's is uh, a uh, Dodge, Dodge Super V. This one's a Plymouth A12. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna have to get a shaft. And now, see, just to get to this O-ring, you gotta take all this out, Leo. You are watching? We still have to remove another shaft now, right here. See, there's a lock right here. Come and see this, I wanna show you. You guys, this is new to see this. You've done this before, right? Devin, okay, Leo, keyway. see that little lock? See the keyway? keyway? Now, when I push up the shaft, see this is designed so the shaft doesn't come this way. I understand. That shaft and this shaft, they don't go forward because there's nothing that locks them. But they don't wanna go that way. Okay. Okay, now I gotta knock this one out. Mm -hmm. Hold the light, watch me knock it out, okay? Here we go. This is kinda tricky, this one's on an angle. Mm. This one, I, you need a special tool, which I don't have. But this we have done it many, many times. Did it move yet? No, it didn't move yet, eh? No. Give me that for a second, give me that. This is the reverse uh, lever. Okay. I'm gonna have to make a tool for this, make it easier. If I'm gonna have a lot more coming in, hold it right there, right there, see Leo? Right there. You gotta tap it lightly, that's all you gotta do, you know? Okay, now, now I wanna push it in a different way. Let me see. Check a little bit on the gasket, too. Yeah, but well, the gasket won't, yeah, hold, the it gasket won't hold it back. No. Okay, bring it here again, right there. Thank you. It's just at the angle to get to it. You're right, here we go. Let's knock it out. Did the, did the lock come out? Yeah, yeah, it came out. Yeah. Okay, put it there in the tray. You see that? That little thing. So this one came out no problem. Hey, no sweat on this one, eh? There we go. Okay, now, let me try this. Now I just gotta push it from here. Pull on it lightly. Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm just gonna tap it here a bit. There we go. There, there. 
There's your reverse gear. Okay. There's bushings on this too, right? Then you, there's the front part is, yeah, there's a bushing in there. There. Then this, now look at this. We still haven't gone to the O-ring. Right here. The O-ring is still trapped in here. Look at this. You gotta keep on going. Oh yeah. So you know what? Get a key for this. Let's take this out. Let's get the spring loaded out. Then we're gonna remove this. Hey, what size is that, Devin? Ah, let's go. Get the keys from the dining room. Don't worry about it. All this just for a lower ring. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what happens sometimes? You look at the gearbox. Yep. You look at it, it's got no stain, no leak, right? It goes in storage. Yep, yep. Then when you take the car to storage, you yep. drive it, you move the shifter back and forth. You know, you work in the seal. The next thing you know is you got an oil leak. Yep. So that is the reason why we're gonna change it. I'm not gonna leave it there. It is not leaking right now, but I'm gonna change it anyways. Why I wanna, take a chance? that's why we'll take a chance. So let's get the spring off. Okay, we still have not received that little simple O-ring. Watch this. Let's re release the uh, spring-loaded spring on the Here. reverse. Uh, that's right. This uh, holds this back, okay? Watch this. Oh, I understand how this works. Okay. Watch this. There's a compressed spring in here. Yeah, that's right. Look at this. Where's the okay, ball the there? Fell in that. Yeah, no, no. You see this? Okay. And this? Right there. Put that in the tray. There's the ball. Now, we look at this. We still haven't got to the O-ring. Look, it's still in there, right? Yeah. Then we take a half inch key. Half inch. Give me that ratchet right there. Okay, watch this now. Ready? Hold the gearbox, uh, Devin. This is where the shifter rod goes on. Yep. Hold it there. Don't move it yet. I want to show you guys. I did this once on another car just for the O-ring on the bottom. Watch this, here we go. We're gonna take this down now, watch this. Yeah, watch this. There it is. You get a pick, get a pick, and I'm gonna show you, there is that O-ring. There it is. Just a little ring, see? Now we're gonna polish the bore, clean this very good, yep. put an O-ring, and put it all back together. But from what I see, I'm gonna have to look at the bearings closely later on, and I'm gonna have to get another shaft to replace this one, which is not a problem. And here it is, remove the O-ring. I wanna show the, our viewers all this work just for an O-ring. There it is. Devin's father has the same transmission. They just did one last year. Look at that, eh? So now what you do, you have to clean uh, the board. You see if there's any pitting area or some rust in that, you gotta clean it. You don't just put a new ring, O-ring. You gotta clean it good. Take a very fine sandpaper, polish the board, clean that. Rip it off, buddy, don't worry. I don't have to save it. There it is. There it is, you guys. All this, just for that. That goes on the reverse gear, all this. There it is. And this is the bottom of the transmission. And that's the simple oil ring that holds all the oil. There it is. And you know, the oil gets heavy, it's thick, it gets thinned out when it gets hot. The shifter moving back and forth, it gets worn out. So this is the reason why we're gonna overhaul it. So there you have it, this is tearing down. We're not gonna tear it down completely because the gears look good to me, except I gotta take off the rear bearing on this. And of course, we gotta look at this bearing right here. This one here. I'm gonna take it apart, yeah. See? But before I take it apart, I just gotta make sure. I'm gonna look at it, and I wanna make sure I can find this uh, bearing. I ordered a couple more, but they did not come the way I wanted it. It wasn't the exact same model. They got a number on it? Yeah, this has got numbers on it. So anyways, I just wanted to show our viewers that tearing down transmission. But my main concern here was right here, the O-ring and those two main bearings. Because I've driven the car up and down the street before I've taken it apart, it shifted well, everything looked good. If you look at the synchronizers, they're all there. All the teeth are there, all the gears are there. The only thing is I had a light humming sound, which I believe is just the bearing or the rollers. These rollers right here. So we're gonna wash them, look at them individually, and we have to replace the shaft that cracked on the way out when I removed it. So there you go, you guys, there it is. Good thing about those shafts is they make good punches once they break. Yeah, well, 
<laughs> Anyways, I, have, I know I have a spare one, so I'm gonna go look for it. And you see this, you see this gasket? Look at it, it's brittle, yeah. you see? So that's a good indication. Yeah, it, it's cracked. It shows an indication it's been a while since this transmission has been rebuilt. So there you go. See, it's hard as a rock. Like paper. That's it. There you go, you guys. I just wanted to give a, well, a breakdown. Devin, you've been through this before. Leo, yep. you see, this was just a fast breakdown on the transmission. You can see, look, these are all the parts of the four-speed. Nothing like an automatic transmission. Nope. The only thing I left on was the backup light switch, which uh, it's okay. We're not going to worry about that. I'll, throw, I'll remove it later on, put a new gasket there, too. And besides that, we're going to get a shaft, check all the rollers. I'm going to go through them with you uh, to see that. And then... Uh, new gaskets. Yeah, I'm gonna go to a gasket kit, but my concern is the bearings. These two main bearings, there's one exactly one here, one right back there. Actually, let's remove it right now. Let's take a few minutes. Ready? Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I wanna see something here. And this one here has a lock ring right here. You see it? Yeah. Give me the, uh, then you're gonna pull this out. I'll open up the snap ring. You ready? Okay, wiggle it and take it out. Up and down. There you go, keep going, keep going. You know what you do? There it is, it's coming. Tap it right there with the mallet, the mallet, the mallet, the mallet, the mallet. It's gonna come out now. The snap ring is out of place. Okay, go ahead, just tap it. Oh, hold the housing. Just tap it. There you go. And there's the other bearing right here. There you go. A lot of gears, but we're not going to dismantle that far because we don't need to replace any gears or any synchronizers. See, this is what I'm going to look at, these two bearings. I'm going to clean them in there, take a good look. They're not pitted. And if it's pitted, we're going to change them. But you know what? This one seems to harm a little bit. This one here is quiet. This one is quiet. This one we're gonna have to replace. Yeah, I can hear the other one. Okay, so we're gonna get a front bearing, get a new seal kit, and I get a shaft. That's about it. So we're pretty good. So there you have it, folks. We just took apart an A12 four-speed transmission from Tim's uh, Roadrunner. I'm gonna order a few pieces that not, uh, now that I know what I need, and uh, hopefully we'll put it back together soon. And thanks for spending uh, your time in the shop with us here today. It is sunny outside. Summer's finally going to be here soon. And uh, we got to start walking and roll on all these cars and get them all out. And you guys, thanks for joining us here at Lake's Garage. I'm hypnotizing you.
And you guys, if you look down below the video, we have a whole bunch of merchandise that you guys can buy. So whatever you like, buy it, love it, wear it, and enjoy it. And help spread the word of Mix Garage. And if you have some time, check out our Patreon page. We have extra content and you guys can watch it and take it from there. And we'll see you next time.